In 1845, the British sent two ships to explore and discover the Northwest Passage. Experienced naval officer Sir John Franklin was chosen to lead the expedition. Not only have I been chosen for this mission by the Admiralty, but I've been chosen for this mission by God. All members of the expedition disappeared. The events remain a mystery. I'm Brian Pilchard, and I love history. Using my skills in effects, clothes, and disguises, I'm going to take you on a journey back in time for an adventure in Super History! 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 history. It's 1845 and the British Admiralty are about to embark on another expedition to discover the Northwest Passage, a potential shortcut from Europe to Asia through the Canadian Arctic. Yes, we're doing this so we can trade easier with the East. We're not just doing it for fun. <laughs> it's heavily pushed by Sir John Barrow, Second Secretary of the Admiralty. Let's go and ask the captains if they want to lead the expedition. I'm too old for this shit. I'm ill and busy. No! Sir John Franklin was chosen. Although his previous expeditions resulted in death and starvation, he was a very experienced naval officer who was even the governor of Van Diemen's Land in Australia. They said that I sucked ass. Back in England, he was well renowned by the public. Okay, sir, there's one hot dog for you. Sir John Franklin. Yes, that's me. The Copperman Expedition. The guy who had to eat his own boots. <laughs> Would you like a, a side of boots with your hot dog? <laughs> or maybe instead of ketchup, I should have sprinkled a shoelace on the top. <laughs> oh, there's my manager. Hey, mate. Um, yeah, you're fired. Second in command of the expedition was Captain Francis Crozier, who at one point was considered to lead the expedition. We don't want him leading it because he's Irish. We're not racist. God, they're a share of bastards. The name's James Fitzjames, Captain of the Erebus. And although I had a very important role of recruitment and the scientific study of magnesium, I've been told that I'm not going to be in this video very much. The historic book said that I was very charming. <laughs> I'm going. A hundred and ten men set sail in two ships. These men were experienced sailors and had a thirst for adventure and the glory of discovering the Northwest Passage. The money's good. The two ships were the HMS Terror and the HMS Erebus, both converted bomb ships with strengthened hulls. They were also the first wooden ships in the Royal Navy to have steam engine propelled propellers. <laughs> sea dogs? More like bloody rev heads! <laughs> this gave them a maximum speed of four knots or seven kilometers per hour. The Admiralty also experimented with canned food, ordering over 8,000 tins from the cheapest vendor. Yeah, we'll, we'll try. The soldering was poor, and a lot of them were rotten. Damn! No mould again! Don't worry, maybe you'll get mould in your next can. To keep order on the ships were 13 Royal Marines. You could say air business is no, no funny, funny business. business. The expedition set sail on the 19th of May 1845 and took 30 days to get to Greenland. The ships briefly restocked some of their provisions at Disco Bay. Be careful! Careful of the funny business! The ship's crew left Disco Bay in high spirits. <laughs> Save water, 
drink beer. <laughs> but seriously, no drunkard behavior or swearing. As they sailed into the Arctic, the ships were in need of their specialist crew members, the Ice Masters. Ah, oh, more bloody ice. My job as an Ice Master is like a ship's master, a navigator, but through the ice. More ice! They circumnavigated Cornwallis Island, and as the ice built up, they spent their first winter at Beachy Island. To keep the crew entertained, there were over a thousand books, sporting equipment, and costumes. Aye aye, Captain! Me and the boys will put on a show! Thanks for coming, everyone! Now let me present to you the boys show! Yeah, baby! Oh, behave! After thawing out of the ice, the expedition continued. Yes, I've got a good feeling about this one. In 1846, the ice built up and the two ships got stuck near King William Island. We shouldn't be here for too long. In May 1847, Franklin sends a sledge party to explore King William Island. They leave a note at Victory Point. Back home, Sir John Franklin's wife, Lady Jane Franklin, rallies up Admiralty and public support to send out a search party. She even enlists the help of family friend, Charles Dickens. Hello everybody, it's me, Charles Dickens. Oh, everybody, it's Slick Dick. Before tonight's performance, I'd just like to raise some money for Sir John Franklin. Uh, did he say, please, sir, can I have some more? <laughs> no, no. Hey, hey, how did you come up with the child capturer? No, that was Ian Fleming. Consider yourself at home. Consider yourself oh. part of the family. We've, We've taken, taken to you, you so strong. It's clear we're going to get along. If it's your chance to be, we should see some other darling. Within two weeks of the sledge party, Franklin died. Oh, fiddlesticks! And Crozier was put in command. Ah, oh, brilliant. The ship stayed trapped in the same position through to 1848. Crozier orders to abandon ship. We're off. Not much happening here. The remaining crew pull their boats across the ice on sleds. They go back to Victory Point and amend the message. They write down where the ships were abandoned, that nine officers and 15 men were dead, and that they intended to go to Back River. It's not known exactly what happened next, but they would have faced the elements. Ooh. Ah. Including frostbite. Oh, Jesus! The crew didn't make it to Back River and most likely died of tuberculosis, scurvy, pneumonia and starvation. Inuit accounts and later discoveries of human bones with saw marks confirmed that they resorted to cannibalism. We need to decide who we're going to eat next. Are we going to use rock, paper, scissor again to decide? It's our best option. Let's get this over with. It's a pity Sir John Franklin isn't here. He could have supplied us with an extra pair of boots. <laughs> we could have eaten that, just like he did on the Copperman expedition. <laughs> Rock, Rock, paper, paper scissors. scissors. Human remains and items of the crew have been found. 
In 2014, the wreck of the Erebus was found, and 2016, the wreck of the Terror. And there's some very interesting images coming out of Parks Canada of the ships underwater, pretty much still intact. Soon they'll probably figure out what happened on the Franklin Expedition, making this video redundant. Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. And to our patrons, thank you for helping us produce this video. Hopefully you're seeing the production upgrade. Also, if you'd like to buy some of our merch, that would support us as well. Thanks very much.